you take the lessons that you have learned here and continue to apply them throughout your lives. That includes the lesson that in school as well in life, no one person can achieve what you have achieved without the support of a wide network of others. While the diploma only has one name on it, we know that past, current, and future success depends not only on one individual's hard work, but also on a community and on the many forces outside of your control. On your academic journey, you've probably experienced mountaintop experiences, but also times when you felt like you were stuck in a deep valley. You might arrive today feeling excited or battered and bruised or relieved. So amidst the celebrations, let's take a moment to give thanks to all of who have supported you on this journey, including parents and family, friends and loved ones, teachers and administrators, partners and mentors, and for all those powers outside of our own. We give thanks for all that walk beside us. You have learned many things on your journey, including that when you copy someone else's work without a proper citation, that's called plagiarism. <laughs> but I have learned that especially after college, if you quote somebody or borrow their aspects of their lesson plans or ideas or programs, it you, it's called using your resources wisely. <laughs> and so in that spirit, I want to close with some words from the Franciscan community. May you be blessed with discomfort at easy answers, half-truths, and superficial relationships so that you li live deeply and from the heart. And may you be blessed with anger at injustice, oppression, and the exploitation of people so that you will work for justice, freedom, and peace. And may you be blessed with tears to shed with those who suffer from pain, rejection, disease, injury, and addiction so that you will reach out your hand to them to comfort them and turn their hurt into joy. And may you be blessed with just enough foolishness to believe that you too can make a difference in this world so that you will do things that others say cannot be done. As you go with diploma in hand, or more likely coming in a few weeks, <laughs> may you be overwhelmed with gratitude to live loving and generous lives, thinking deeply and wrestling with hard questions, building relationships with those around you, including especially those who disagree with you. And may you go always seeking to contribute to the common good of humanity. Congratulations, class of 2018. Please be seated. We all love you. <laughs> Thank you, Reverend Ranker, for your thoughtful words of reflection. Uh, just before coming uh, here, I had a chance to talk to Reverend Ranker, and it turns out that we all, I almost went to the same college that he went to in South Dakota. It was a small Lutheran college, but instead I ended up in a small Methodist college there in the Midwest. But thank you, um, Adia and uh, of the University of Maryland Wynn Ensemble, Dr. Andrew Brown, for your inspired rendition of the national anthem. And thank you, of course, to the University Honor Guard for your service. Now, let me begin by acknowledging the marshals who are seated on the first two rows uh, here. They were selected. Yes, give yourselves a cheer. They were selected on the basis of their ac academic accomplishments, their contributions to campus life, so I think we need to recognize you properly. Would you please stand up to be recognized? <laughs> the 
You may sit down. You know, I was supposed to come to your lunch yesterday, so I need to apologize. I screwed up. I thought it was at 12.30, it was at 11.30, so when I got there, you had already left. So my apologies, and after the ceremony, I will make it up by giving each of you a turtle pick. Is that okay? <laughs> so I also want to thank the faculty, the staff, the faculty marshals who have come and joined us today to honor our graduates. Would you all please stand up to be recognized? And uh, among the people who are here are the directors of our Army, Navy, and uh, Air Force, ROTC. Thank you very much for your service. Thank you for being here today. So um, as we begin the ceremony, I'm reminded of the words that a good friend, an Irish Catholic priest, once shared with me. He said, knowing that I was going to preside over a commencement ceremony, this was many years ago, but still holds true today. He says, just remember that the speaker at a commencement ceremony is like, uh, it's like the body at an old-fashioned Irish wake. They need to have the body to have a party, but nobody expects the body to say very much. <laughs> so uh, all of us will try to follow adv that advice, certainly me, and be merc mercifully brief in our remarks. So with that, our first speaker is Mr. Gary Atman. He's a regent on the University System Board of Regents. He'll bring greetings on behalf of the board, and you should know that he is a proud Terp. He got his accounting degree here at College Park, got his law degree at University of Maryland in Baltimore, and he is the president and CEO of a healthcare facility in uh, actually a large business in Baltimore. Regent Edmund. Thank you, Dr. Lowe, and I'll be mindful of your uh, suggestion. Uh, I remember when I was in speech class, first thing the speech teacher told us was the mark of a good speech is the beginning and the end are very close to each other. So, um, President Lowe, distinguished guests, faculty, and staff, family, friends, and most of all, our wonderful graduates of the class of 2018. Come on, yeah. <clears throat> I am honored to be with you today to offer congratulations on behalf of the University System of Maryland. Our board oversees Maryland's 12 major public universities and research institutions. And of course, out of all of those campuses, the University of Maryland at College Park is the centerpiece, the flagship institution. Working in partnership with our university presidents, as well as the governor and the legislature, we have invested in an extraordinary number of capital projects and academic programs that have and will continue to keep higher education excellent, accessible, and affordable here at our flagship and throughout our campuses in Maryland. Now, one key to a great university is outstanding university leadership. And on this campus, we are very fortunate to have Dr. Wallace Lowe and his team leading the way. They have transformed, please. They have transformed our university into a flourishing garden of innovation, discovery, and accomplishment. And they have also played a major role in making Greater College Park one of America's most dynamic college towns. So on behalf of the Board of Regents and myself, I'd like to thank Dr. Lowe and his team for all that you do. Let's give them another hand, please. <laughs> Dear graduates, just like like each of you, as Dr. Lowe said, I am a Terp, having graduated many decades ago. Now, please note how I referred to myself. I did not say I was a Terp, but that I am one. And I can tell you with all sincerity that decades after graduating, 
I feel as fervent a connection with the University of Maryland as I did when I was a student. Whenever I see our beautiful campus and so many bright and energetic students like yourselves wearing Maryland t-shirts and other garb, my heart swells with pride and respect because most of my classmates would never have been able to get into Maryland under today's high standards. So I'd like to congratulate you not only on getting in, but on completing your rigorous courses of study. Your degree from Maryland will be an asset for your whole life, and that TERP diploma will help get you a good start in your chosen career. And after you start your career and your post-college life in earnest, I would strongly encourage each of you to do what I did, keep and even grow your relationship with the University of Maryland. It will keep you feeling young, it will keep you relevant, and it will keep you connected with an institution that cares deeply about you and that offers a lifetime of opportunities to learn, to teach, to cheer, and to maximize your potential in unlimited ways. Once again, congratulations to all of you, and please know that the entire University System of Maryland family wishes you all the best in the years to come. Go Terps. Thank you, Regent Antman, for your remarks, for your service on the board, and for your support of the flagship university of the system. Now, I would like to introduce the members on the platform party behind me. And I would ask that when I call your name, would you please stand? And then the audience to please withhold your applause until I have finished uh, recognizing all the people because otherwise we're going to be here all night. You already know uh, Regent Gary Atman. You can stand up. Langston Frazier is a student regent on the Board of Regents, and he is a senior, I believe, at University of Maryland Eastern Shore. Marianne Ranking, Senior Vice President and Provost, and she is a biologist. Am I correct? Right. <laughs> uh, and what type of a biologist? Um, an insect physiologist. Insect physiology, whatever that is. <laughs> Linda Clement, Vice President for Student Affairs, and where's Linda? And you have been here for 30 years, am I? 45. 45 years of service to this university. That is incredible. That deserves a special round of applause. <laughs> Carlo Colella, Vice President for Administration and Finance. He is a civil engineer, graduate from here in engineering. And Carlo has been here, how long have you been here? 30 years, very impressive as well. 30 years doesn't quite get it. You have to be here for 40 years. Uh, Jeff Hollingsworth, he's our chief information officer and a professor in computer science. Uh, and you've been here 24 years. 24 years. That's what makes this university people of long loyalty and service to this institution. But of course, you also need fresh blood such as Jacqueline Lewis. She is our Vice President for University Relations. And Jackie, you've only been here two, two or three years. You've done a fantastic job. She's leading our capital campaign to raise $1 billion. A lot of that for student financial aid, and she's doing an incredible job, way above projections. Thank you for your service. Lori Locasio, Vice President for Research, uh, at the University of Maryland College Park, but she is also Vice President for Research at the University of Maryland, Baltimore. This is a first for somebody to be Vice President at both institutions, which shows about the partnership of our two institutions. And she is, correct me if I'm wrong, Laurie, you are a toxicologist and a biomedical engineer. So she has two careers. Michael Potarella, he is Vice President and General Counsel for the University and he's our lawyer. And you say, why do you need a lawyer on your team when you yourself are a lawyer? And yes, I'm a lawyer, but there's a difference between the two of us. He is a real lawyer. <laughs> I am a public interest lawyer. It's in the public interest that I don't practice law. <laughs> Joanne Bauman, 
the university system, senior vice chancellor for academic affairs and student affairs, where are you, Joanne? And uh, she is a specialist in medical genetics. Do I have that right? Good. Damon, Damon Evans, our director of athletics. Uh, thank you, Damon, for being here. Um, this is what you're Sec you're starting your first year, full first year, as full-time athletic director. Joel Segmentman, Associate Vice President for Marketing and Communications, and he's been here about a couple years, correct? Kirk Bell, President of the Maryland Alumni Association. Kirk, I wish you would open up your robe. Show people your Maryland pride. <laughs> that Ladies and gentlemen, it's Maryland Pride. He graduated in economics and government and politics. He's now the director of enterprise data at Fannie Mae Corporation. Amy Eichhorst, she is the executive director of the Maryland Alumni Association that has 375,000 alumni around the world. Now this next person Mark my words, I'm gonna make a fearless prediction. 20 years from now, he will be a high profile elected official. Jonathan Allen, president of the student government. He's a senior from Florida. Yes, he's gonna be an elected official in the state of Maryland. Why? Because he is going to intern in his final semester full time in Annapolis. And Rappaport. Anne Rappaport is the president of the Student Government Association, and she's pursuing a PhD in, remind me? Uh, my name is Annie. Annie. I'm graduate student government. Right. And then uh, I'm in peace studies, international education. International education in peace studies, and let me tell you, if there's something this world needs, is more peace. <laughs> Christopher Walsh, he is the chair of the University Senate, He's a professor of horticulture. His specialty is pomology. And you should know that he's the inventor of a new strain of apples. It's called the Antietam Blush. And you should get it. It is an absolutely delicious apple that he has invented. Marsha Gunsler Stevens and Robert Infantino are the senior marshals. Marsha, as you know, is the director of the Stamp Union and Bob Infantino is an associate dean in the College of, of um, Computer and Mathematical and Natural Sciences. Martha Nell Smith, professor of English and probably the world's leading scholar in the poetry of Emily Dickinson. And why is that significant? Because this February, there will be a release from a major studio of a movie based upon her work. And she's given credit for this movie. And this movie is Wild Nights with Emily. <laughs> I am waiting to see that movie when it comes out in February. <laughs> and will all the university deans please rise and they will introduce themselves later in this program. And while we're at it, I should also recognize by name the directors of our uh, ROTC programs and ask them to please stand. Uh, Colonel David Backhut, Director of Air Force ROTC. Captain Troy Monk, Director of Navy ROTC. And Lieutenant Colonel Larry Rance, Director of Army ROTC. Thank you all. Now, at each commencement, we ask a student to address the graduating class. And it gives me great pleasure today to introduce Rehan Staten. I know his family and friends are here. Uh, Rehan, come on. Come on up. Before I fully introduce you, somewhere in the audience are your parents and, your fr and, 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 and some friends of yours. Where are they? Could you just stand up and wave? You see them? There you are. And one of his friends came all the way from Atlanta to be 
in this uh, ceremony. Let me simply say that for some students, college has changed everything. And when you hear Rihan speak, I think you will find it an incredibly inspiring story, which makes us very proud that he's a Terp. And we are very proud that you are graduating this term. Yeah. So uh, my graduate, you guys ever notice whenever something important is about to happen, that's when you end up catching a cold or getting sick or something along those lines? You know, it doesn't stop after college. It really doesn't. So if my voice goes out, please bear with me. Matter of fact, can I can you guys put the water a little bit out there? Because I might end up needing it. Thank you. Hello, parents, faculty, staff, alumni, special guests, and the illustrious class of 2018. When I was in high school, my teachers just knew I was going to become a professional fighter in mixed martial arts or in boxing. As you see, that did not happen. <laughs> but I feel fortunate to be here today because with the expectation that I would become a fighter, my high school teachers always told me to study for my SATs. Psych. They told me, don't study. I mean, they said, how did your training go, Ray Han? So upon graduation in 2014, I unfortunately damaged both of my rotator cuffs. And I was not able to further that career. Mike Tyson, the youngest heavyweight champion of all time, has a famous saying. Everyone has a plan until they get hit. So when I was reflecting upon the experiences of my peers and myself here at Maryland, I came to the conclusion that college was not so different than boxing. A lot of rounds, a lot of decisions to make, and a lot of paths to victory. You may not know, championship boxing matches are 12 rounds. The early rounds are always complicated. You are trying to figure out your opponent. You, you don't really know what he or she is capable of. Just like entering the university as a freshman or a transfer student. We have all these plans in this big, new, strange world, but we don't really know we have, what we have gotten ourselves into. We strive for 4.0s, leadership positions, top accolades, but like Tyson said, you get hit and your plans change. We change majors, change concentrations, and some of us even had to take a break from school. But we bounced back and adapted because if we had not, some of us would not be here today. But there are also those of us who are like Muhammad Ali and Floyd Mayweather and use their defense to duck and dodge those obstacles and get 4.0s from the start. But that wasn't the norm. Wait a second. Take that back. Parents, we all got 4.0s. <laughs> we did not lie to you. We did really good in school every semester, I promise. But going into the middle rounds, a fighter begins to figure out their opponent. Just like after a couple semesters here, we finally figure out how this university functions. Our grades are solid. We join organizations. We gain internships. But then, an obstacle completely unrelated to school occurs, and those often hurt the worst. It's always the punch that you did not see coming that knocks you down. For example, 
My father suffered a stroke my second semester here. As a result, I worked 40 hours a week to support him. I woke up 5 a.m. in the morning every day to work at a trash recycling company. Luckily, they let me leave for class as long as I returned back to finish the day. During these exhausting and difficult times, I often reflected on Muhammad, uh, I often reflected on a Muhammad Ali quote. He said, I hated every minute of training, but I said, don't quit, suffer now, and live the rest of your life as a champion. So I, just like all of you, dug deep and picked myself back up to finish this fight. But we have to remember, boxers are not alone. Finishing the fight is often more difficult in the later rounds, especially after being knocked down. But that is what a fighter's cornermen are for. When you get knocked down, you are hurt. You're tired. It's the cornerman's job to rejuvenate the fighter in between rounds so he or she can go back out and finish the fight. That's exactly how the University of Maryland operates. Our friends, faculty, and staff collectively serve as our corner men. And even despite being in a highly competitive institution, this is one of the most compassionate environments I know. When I was going through that difficult time, my classmates, when I had to miss class for work, they would take notes from me. They made sure I understood the lessons. My teachers would personally email me and tell me things like, let me know what you need me to do so we can make sure that you finish. And my advisor, she was making sure I did all I needed to do to graduate. So just like boxers, if it wasn't for these people in our particular corners, we may have ultimately lost the fight. But here we are today. We did not lose. And for that, I congratulate you. We are champions today. But is that truly enough? Muhammad Ali, the greatest boxer of all time, was not merely known as a boxer. He was a champion, a humanitarian, a world leader. And most importantly, he was known as a man of the people. The most important lesson I learned from Muhammad Ali is this. One-dimensional fighters do not last in the ring, nor do they last outside of the ring. This university has helped us become the exact opposite of one-dimensional. This university breeds multidimensional students. Here we are taught that all the aspects of life matter. The collaboration between the arts and the sciences, music and engineering, history and biology, that is what makes University of Maryland a special place. And now, now we have become more than our majors. We are active. We constructively debate on a variety of issues. We protest where we find injustice. And we learn to value the variety of voices of others even the voices we disagree with. Today, one journey ends and another one begins. We are not leaving here with just our achievements and our GPAs. Rather, we are leaving here with the versatile skills that enabled us to persevere and succeed here at Maryland. The same skills that gave us the ability to interact with any community and the world around us and work towards change There is a famous saying in boxing, a champion is someone who gets back up. And as Turks, we are champions because we pick each other up.
Thank you and congratulations to the class of 2018. Thank you, Rehan. You are a champion. You never stop being a fighter. And I know that after law school, you will go out and fight for others who seek justice. We are really proud of you. I would like, now like to introduce the student members of the group Manor Music. And performing today, boy, I like your uh, bow tie, I like your scarf. <laughs> uh, performing today are Jeremiah Lee, who will be graduating in 2019 in music education. Kevin Costello, who will be graduating this spring, oh no, next spring, uh, with a degree in philosophy. And uh, Jonathan O'Neill, who will be graduating next semester with a degree in hearing and speech sciences, and Joseph Daniel Salunas, who will graduate this spring with a degree in physics. And they will perform America the Beautiful. Majesties above the fruited plain. America, America, God shed his grace on thee and crown thy good with brotherhood from sea to shining sea. Oh, beautiful for pilgrim feet whose stern impassioned stress a thoroughfare for freedom beat across the wilderness. America, America, God mend thine every flaw. Confirm thy soul in self-control, thy liberty in love. O oh, beautiful for heroes proved in liberating strife, who more than self their country loved and mercy more than life. America, America, may God thy gold refine till all success be nobleness and every gain divine. O oh, beautiful for patriot dream that sees beyond the years, thine alabaster cities gleam undimmed by human tears. America, America, God shed his grace on thee and crown thy good with brotherhood from sea to shining sea. Thank you, Man of Music, for that moving performance, for touching us with your voices and your spirit. One of the wonderful things about our student body at this, uh, on this campus is the vast number of a cappella groups um, all over the place. And we have some very, very talented uh, singers uh, among 
uh, our student body. Now, there is a special committee of students, faculty, and staff who select our commencement speaker. And this year, they have made an exceptional choice for our speaker. And to introduce our commencement speaker is Annie Rappaport, the president of the graduate student uh, government. Good evening, everyone, and thank you, Dr. Lowe. It is a true honor to be here today and to see all of you graduate, so congratulations. This is such an auspicious occasion and a celebratory event. We're celebrating you, our community members, as you transition from UMD to the wider world. Here at the University of Maryland, we pride ourselves on being Terrapins, Terps, and for being fearless in our pursuits to support our local and global communities. We are resilient, ambitious, and caring. These values are embodied by our guest speaker, Dr. John B. King. Dr. King is the president and CEO of the Education Trust. He has led and continues to lead an extraordinary life. Dr. King's accomplishments are numerous. A graduate of Harvard, Yale, and Columbia, Dr. King knows the challenges and rewards of education. He served as the 10th U.S. Secretary for Education, as the New York State Commissioner for Education, as a middle school principal, and as a high school history teacher, social studies teacher in both Massachusetts and Puerto Rico. Dr. King believes as we do, that education has an incredible transformative benefit, and today he will share his insights on his own transformation as well as the many people he has touched. He also happens to be a visiting professor at our own College of Education this year. Please join me in welcoming Dr. King. Thank you so much, Annie, for that kind introduction. Thank you, President Lowe, Provost Rankin, all the families, friends, staff, and faculty, and of course, most importantly, our graduates. You've worked hard to get to this moment. Some of you persevered through personal challenges. Some of you are the first in your family to earn a college degree. Some of you juggled academics while working, being a spouse and parent or taking care of a family member. You made it to this day in no small part because of your belief in the transformative power of education. I believe in that too. Education saved my life. Both of my parents passed away when I was a kid. My mom when I was eight, my dad when I was 12. After my mom passed, I lived with my dad. It was just the two of us, and he was struggling with undiagnosed Alzheimer's. So home was this place that was scary and unpredictable and lonely. But school, school was amazing. I was blessed to have teachers who chose to invest in me. In fact, the only reason that I'm not dead or in prison today is because of amazing public school teachers who could have looked at me and said, here's an African-American, Latino male student, family in crisis, going to an urban public school, what chance does he have? But instead, they created a space at school that was safe and nurturing and engaging. My teachers gave me a sense of hope and possibility when life at home was often hopeless. I stand here today because teachers stood up for me. And so today I want to encourage you, regardless of the career you choose, to use the education you have earned here at UMD to stand up for others. I'm asking that you think about what you can do to shape the course of history, to be history makers. In fact, right here on this campus, almost 10 years ago, students made history by leading the way toward uncovering Maryland's connection to slavery. In 2006, when the university celebrated its 150th anniversary, many wondered why there weren't many mentions of the university's roots in slavery. A group of African-American faculty asked then-President Moe to join the state legislature in apologizing for the use 
of the labor of enslaved people. This led to the creation of a report on the university's connections to slavery led by students, students in the History 429 class. The story of our campus's connection to slavery is personal for me. My grandfather's grandmother, Lydia King, was born in 1820, just a few miles from here in Montgomery County. She lived during a time of two Marylands, where free wage labor and slave labor coexisted in the same state. In their research, the History 429 students told the story, previously unacknowledged, of the university's deep roots in a system of oppression and injustice. They represented the history by telling the story of three university founders. Charles Calvert, a planter who owned enslaved people. Benjamin Hollowell, a Quaker who opposed slavery and was the first president of the university, but resigned after just one month many suspected because of his opposition to slavery, and Adam Francis Plummer, a literate enslaved man owned by Charles Calvert. Plummer is in many ways a symbol for other enslaved black women and men whose names sadly we may never know, but whose labor helped make the university possible. Through Adam Francis Plummer, students didn't rewrite, but rather reclaimed the story of this campus's founding, securing the place of an enslaved black man as one of the founding fathers of this great university. In an article published after the report's release, Adam Francis Plummer's great-great-grandson exclaimed, I saw my ancestor listed as a founder. You don't know what that did for me. Though then President Moat did not issue an apology, History 429 made plain the truth of our collective history. Like the National Museum of African American History and Culture, or South Africa's Truth and Reconciliation Commission, or the reparations paid to victims of Japanese American internment, students of History 429 understood that sometimes you must look back to move forward that an honest accounting of past injustices is foundational to building a more just future. Just as the students in the, in the History 429 course use their education to be agents of social change, I ask that you put your education to work to fight for a more just society. We live in a moment of extraordinary division, besieged by incidents like the KKK marching across the UVA campus or the murder of people worshiping in a Pittsburgh synagogue. Scientists warn we've nearly reached a point of no return on climate change. Economic inequality continues to grow. We must act, we collectively must act with urgency to tackle these challenges. As John Legend says in his song, If You're Out There, we're the generation. We can't afford to wait. The future started yesterday, and we're already late. To build a more just future, I'd like to suggest that you embrace a few key attitudes essential to engage citizenship. Be informed, be engaged, be open, and be of service. In our current times, when even elected leaders traffic in false conspiracy theories, all of us must be informed. We must be informed about how our government works. We must retain as fundamental an understanding of our rights. And we must have the knowledge to, as Dr. Martin Luther King once wrote, discern the true from the false, the real from the unreal, and the facts from the fiction. We must understand how systems from housing to healthcare to education to criminal justice intersect and can be influenced by the forces of bias, racism, and privilege. One of the flagship fellows graduating today who earned her doctorate in geography has made it her mission to understand inequalities like these. As a first-generation college student, she dedicated her studies here at Maryland to examining economic, racial, and geographic inequalities in her native Puerto Rico, where my mother was born. And she's committed herself to eliminating those inequalities. Indeed, our nation's colleges and universities should be centers not only of academic rigor, 
but of civic learning and social consciousness. And I believe that every graduate, students like you, can be history makers when you are civically engaged. And that's not just about voting. Voting is important, but the work of democracy doesn't end on election day. It begins with election day. Democracy is about participation. It is about making your voices heard. It is about contributing to your community. When I was in college, I ran a summer camp for kids in the Mission Maine public housing development in Boston. The neighborhood struggled with violence, drugs, and crime. But in this community, I also saw examples of hope, determination in the face of hardship, love, and strength. Those experiences, those experiences volunteering in the community helped to shape my decision to become a teacher and a principal in the very same neighborhood where I had served. And that's the thing about being engaged. It can help you find your purpose and your path. I'm inspired by one of today's graduates who served in the US Navy and is using his education at UMD to pursue a teaching career. He's dedicated to working with L LGBTQ students and students in juvenile detention, engaging with students where they are to teach for social justice. On your path to make history, my third piece of advice is to be open. And that will mean working with people who are different from you, who have different values than yours, who have different beliefs than yours. You likely experienced this during your time here at Maryland, learning alongside students from different communities and racial and socioeconomic backgrounds. Being open also requires being prepared to respectfully debate when you disagree and to thoughtfully listen to views different from your own. Being open also requires a sense of curiosity about the world and a belief that you can change it for the better. Take one of our graduates who wondered what the school could be doing to better protect the planet he co-founded a project that helps Maryland students understand how to properly recycle and dispose of the things they use every day. My final piece of advice is that to be a history maker, you also have to be of service. Be of service to your community, to your country, and to each other. That may mean choosing a career in teaching or serving in public office, but it can also simply mean doing good with one of your most precious resources, your time. One of your peers graduating today understands this well. She served in the U.S. Marines. While she studied here, she volunteered as a Sunday school teacher and assistant soccer coach. She's also a wife, mother, and a first-generation college student. She's a model for all of us. This former Marine shows what's possible with a serious time management strategy. Graduates, you are well positioned to take on the challenges of today to make for a better tomorrow. And I'll encourage you as alumni to help push this university to continue to get better, to increase the diversity of students and faculty, to enroll more students of color, students from low-income backgrounds and first-generation college goers, to be an engine of social mobility. And I'll close by asking this. Who will build the buildings on this campus who will the buildings on this campus be named after years from now? Who will be the future members of the United States Congress? Who will cure diseases? Who will teach our children? Who will stand right here addressing graduates at future commencements? My bet is on you, the history makers in this room. Thank you and congratulations to all of you. Thank you so much, Dr. King. It is with, it's my honor to give you this gift on behalf of the graduating class of winter 2018. Thank you so much. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you, Dr. King. Thank you also for your life of commitment and of service, and uh, since you are nearby, we hope you come back and visit us more often, even after you finish your term as a visiting professor 
uh, in our College of Education. Now we come to the moment that you've been waiting for, the presentation of the degrees. And uh, I'm going to ask the deans to step forward one at a time, introduce yourselves, and introduce your college. And of, of course, I invite the graduates to stand up and cheer when your college is announced. So will the candidates for the degrees in the College of Agriculture and Natural Resources please stand up? Don't be shy. Good evening. My name is Craig Beirudi, and I'm honored to serve as your Dean of the College of Agriculture and Natural Resources, the founding college here on campus, or as we like to say, the cornerstone college of the University of Maryland. I'm honored to represent our faculty and our staff today and extend congratulations from our entire college community. We're very proud of each and every one of you. You've dedicated your lives to some of the most urgent and complex challenges that our world has ever faced. You're now equipped to participate in and even lead global efforts to eliminate hunger, to protect our limited natural resources, to improve the health and quality of life of all citizens no matter where they live. You didn't know that, did you? <laughs> to create a sustainable future in the face of a changing climate and a growing population, and yes, to even prepare those who follow you as scientists committed to advancing agriculture and protecting our natural resources. We know you'll inspire pride in our college as our newest ambassadors, and you'll continue to be guided by the land-grant values that are the heart and soul of this university. Congratulations to all of you, and go Terps. Good evening, Maryland. Will the award-winning, innovative, and compassionate students of the School of Architecture, Planning, and Preservation please stand? <laughs> My name is Don Leinbaugh, and I'm the interim dean of the school. Our fearless graduates leave Maryland prepared to design, plan, develop, and preserve the communities and neighborhoods we call home, creating sustainable, equitable, just, and beautiful places for us to live, work, and play. Our amazing students continue to compete and take top honors in national and international competitions, and most importantly, they continue to help communities across the globe, most recently through the Roots Home and Abroad program working in Haiti. So please join me in congratulating these amazing Terps. Good evening. Would the history knowers and future history makers and the multidimensional students from the College of Arts and Humanities please rise. Graduates from our college are global visionaries and creative problem solvers. They have the skills to make uh, the skills and talents employers seek in the 21st century. They write well, they read critically, they listen actively, they communicate effectively, and think creatively. They are culturally aware and linguistically adept. They are worldwide. And because they are all of these wonderful things, uh, I want you to know that 95% of last year's graduates were placed in jobs, graduate schools, service programs, or started their own businesses. Now, some of you parents may have said, what are you going to do with a major in the humanities or the arts? But I want you to know that 95% of our students were placed. So graduates, you have a lot to be proud of. We're very proud of you. So if you are our Hugh, give a big cheer. Congratulations.
My name is Greg Ball, and I'm lucky enough to be the dean of the College of Behavioral and Social Sciences that we call BSOS. Will the 2018 graduates of the College of Behavioral Sciences please stand? I am proud. I am proud that BSOS. I am proud that BSOS is the college that plays a leading role of all entities in the UM system and government leadership. We have over 15 of our alumni in the state legislature right now. Our alumni were recently elected to Congress in California, Illinois, and Maryland. Our alumni lead police departments, schools, nonprofit and for-profit enterprises of all manner and address the major issues facing our society, including crime, economic inequality, social and ethnic conflict, and how social behavior impacts the environment. President Lowe, I present to you the next generation of BSAW students who are ready to be the solution and lead us forward in addressing the problems of our age. Go forth and prosper. Good evening. I'm Alex Trianis, a proud dean of the Smith School of Business. Could the candidates please stand? At the Smith School, our students walk in every day to a big, bold sign covering an entire wall that simply says, lead fearlessly. In addition to learning about core business principles such as finance, marketing, operations, and strategy, they learn how to be entrepreneurial, innovative, globally minded, and principled leaders, mindful of all the challenges and opportunities of a world transformed by new technologies. They learn how business can change many lives and have a positive impact on society. Much of this is learned through collaborative experiences. Just one simple example, two weeks ago, the Smith School's Dingman Center for Entrepreneurship and the Center for Social Value Creation hosted HALT at UMD, a local edition of the Hulk Prize, the largest student competition for social good in the world. Each competitor team developed an idea to provide 10,000 jobs to young people within the next decade. The winner on call helps address the lack of doctors in India through telemedicine, giving more people access to health care while also creating jobs. This is the real potential of business, to create applied, scalable, systemic, and increasingly digital solutions to some of the biggest challenges facing the world today. These Smith School students will be innovators who analyze complex problems and disrupt the status quo. Smith graduates, we're very proud of your accomplishments and we're excited to send you into the world. You have so much potential. Go lead fearlessly. I am Amitabh Varshney, the proud dean of the College of Computer, Mathematical, and Natural Sciences. Will all the graduates of CMNS please stand and be recognized? We are the largest college and growing because science is fascinating and expansive. From observing the farthest reaches of the universe to exploiting the tiniest of the atoms, from pushing the limits of computing to understanding life itself. These graduates have made science a fearless idea. Please join me in congratulating these students who will be dedicating their lives to science. Congratulations. Good evening. I'm Jennifer Rice, and I, it is my privilege to be the Dean of the College of Education. Would the graduates of the College of Education please stand and be recognized? <laughs> the College of Education prepares its graduates to take on one of the most important and challenging issues of our day, preparing the next generation of global citizens who are equipped to con contribute to the economic, social, political, and civic fabric of our communities, our nation, and our world.
Graduates of our college will be teachers, counselors, policymakers, scholars, and transformational leaders. They're prepared to be innovators in education and human development research, and they are committed to work that will foster the goals of excellence, equity, diversity, and inclusion toward improving the lives and opportunities of every individual. Graduates, this is an awesome responsibility, and you are prepared for it. Congratulations. Good evening. I am Darrell Pines, and I am Dean of the A. James Clark School of Engineering. Will the graduates of the Clark School please rise to be recognized? Congratulations. Dear Clark School graduates, I ask you, what will you build? Will it be the first Hyperloop system that transports passengers from New York to D.C. in 30 minutes? Or will it be the first all-electric bike that will transport a human over 125 miles without the single charge? Or will it be a new solution to solving the wildfires in the West? Or will it be the first human organ transported by a drone to save a person's life? Well, whatever it will be, I know it will be great. And you know why? Because like the 2018 national champions in men's soccer, we are Terrapin Tough. Yes, repeat after me. We are Terrapin Tough. We are Terrapin Tough. We are Terrapin Tough. Congratulations. Good evening, everyone. My name is Boris Lushniak. I'm honored to be the Dean of the School of Public Health, and I ask the School of Public Health candidates to please arise with a big hurrah. I also want the faculty members from the School of Public Health to also rise up so you can share in this proud moment, because without the faculty, none of this really happens. So a big shout out to our faculty members as well. Graduates, today is a big day. Today is the opportunity for you to celebrate, for you to be proud of this moment, along with your friends and families. But tomorrow the work starts. And need I remind you of the challenges that public health presents in front of you, right? Just open up the paper, read the news, and realize that we deal right now, this very day, with the big news of yet another epidemic, dealing with the idea of the vaping world, the e-cigarette world, another addiction for our children. We don't go very far to realize that around us is the opioid epidemic, that we have a lack of physical fitness in our society. And yes, people, we are starting off with yet another influenza season. So if you haven't gotten vaccinated, just do it. But back to you guys. Realize that this is all fun and games until it isn't fun and games. And the health of our nation, the health of our people, the health of our society is of the utmost importance. Nothing works without that help. I now empower you as the graduates of the famed School of Public Health to go out there and do incredible things. Thank you so much, so proud of you. Will the students from the College of Information Studies please stand? Excellent. Thank you. My name is Keith Marzullo, and I'm the dean of the iSchool, as we call it, the College of Information Studies. We've been living in the information age for a long time now, but it's still changing very rapidly. These students, all of you students, have lived in an era where you've always had Wikipedia to do your term papers. And you can find the information and contact the right people using your mobile devices. What are your children going to be living in? They'll be living in smart cities and connected communities. And they will be making their important decisions based on that is fully informed by information and based on what we now call artificial intelligence. The world is changing very rapidly. It's being shaped by technology, but it's being driven by information. And you, our high school students, you are going to be the drivers of that information. As you are going to go off, you'll be creating and staffing the institutions 
and developing and applying the processes that collect, curate, uh, develop, <laughs> what can I say? Uh, clean and correlate the information and transform it to knowledge and to action. Some of you will leave here to become librarians and archivists, and others will leave here to become user experience researchers, cyber defense technologists, and web designers. But all of you are going to be creating the next wave of this information age. Congratulations. Good evening. I'm Lucy Dalglish, Dean of the Philip Merrill College of Journalism. Could the graduates of Merrill College please stand? <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, the graduates of Merrill College gather facts and use words, images, videos, audio, algorithms, data, and virtual reality to tell the stories that members of their communities need to be thoughtful, engaged, informed members of our society. These journalists do it thoughtfully, quickly, legally, and ethically. And they chalk up lots of national awards while they're doing it. They know the difference between fact and fiction, and they are the journalists who will speak truth to power and enlighten us about those we have forgotten. Please join me in congratulating the graduates of the Philip Merrill College of Journalism. Good evening. I am Robert Ord, proud dean of the School of Public Policy. I ask that the graduates of the School of Public Policy stand and be recognized. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, these students before you and their colleagues who have gone off to take their jobs already <laughs> have helped to implement the Paris Climate Agreement. They have advised and worked for governments and nonprofits here in Prince George's County, in Annapolis, in Washington, D.C., New Delhi, and Beijing. They have founded social ventures to end hunger and stop human trafficking. They have proved that even in 2018, discourse can be civil, debates can be productive, common cause can be found in College Park Annapolis, and even in Washington, D.C. Ladies and gentlemen, these students before you will make governing cool again. <laughs> and they will not only do well as they go forth into the world, they will also do good. Congratulations, Policy Terps. I'm Steve Fitter, Dean of the Graduate School, which in March will celebrate its centennial, 100 years of graduate education at the University of Maryland. Will all students receiving master's degrees please stand from all schools and colleges? The master's degree recognizes advanced study in an academic discipline or a profession. You have demonstrated advanced knowledge and the ability to solve complex problems, think rigorously and independently, and perform at a high level. You are now a master in your field or profession. Congratulations. And please be seated and Will all students receiving doctoral degrees please stand? <laughs> you are receiving the highest degree offered by the University of Maryland. The PhD is what defines us as a research university. You have spent long hours working in laboratories and libraries and hunched over a computer writing and performing analysis. Most importantly, you've demonstrated the ability to do independent and original research and scholarship. You are a creator of new knowledge and an expert from whom other researchers and scholars will learn. Congratulations.
Good evening. I'm William Cohen, Dean for Undergraduate Studies. The Office of Undergraduate Studies runs programs that reach every student on this campus. We oversee the Honors College, College Park Scholars, the Academic Achievement Programs, Letters and Sciences, and many other offices that extend across the whole university, including the general education program through which all undergraduates take classes in a variety of subject areas. Tonight, we recognize those graduates for whom the 90 majors offered at this university did not suffice. These fearless students designed their own rigorous interdisciplinary majors in the individual studies program. Would the bachelor degree recipients in individual studies majors please rise to be recognized? Congratulations. Good evening. Uh, I'm Baba Kamidzadeh, the interim dean of uh, libraries here at the University of Maryland. At the libraries, we strive to bring you the information you need when you need it, wherever you are. Now, May I ask all the students, whoever went to the libraries or used library resources anywhere, <laughs> to please stand, and that better be just about every one of you. Congratulations to all of you. Best wishes. There must be a student somewhere who never went to the library because they access the resources on their mobile devices, but that day is not yet here. You may be seated. Well, thank you, deans. It's great to see the energy and enthusiasm here at Xfinity and uh, so no, the most important moment has arrived, the moment when you are authorized to receive your degrees. And uh, assisting me in officially bestowing these diplomas is Provost Ranking. She will come up in a moment, not yet. <laughs> because I think I need to explain <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Keep them coming. You know what those degrees mean, but for the benefit of your family and friends who are here, I thought I would take a moment to, uh, you know, tell you the true meaning of these diplomas that you're about to receive. You see, when you're in high school, and when you think that you know everything that there is to know, that's when they give you a high school diploma. And then you come to college. And then it dawns upon you that there's so much more you need to learn, that there's so much you don't know. And when that realization occurs to you, that is when you have earned a bachelor's degree. Now, if you hang around a little bit longer to go to graduate school, and then it finally dawns upon you that not only you know very little, but your professors also know very little that's when we bestow upon you the PhD. <laughs> you know, what is education but the progressive discovery of our own ignorance? As the poet Yeats once said, education is not the filling of the pail. Education is the lighting of a flame, of a passion for learning that will last a lifetime. And if we do our jobs right here, as educators, you will be students for life. So now I call upon Provost Ranking to come forward and present candidates for the degrees. And you won't believe this. There are scores of the different types of degrees that we're presenting. So you must be a little bit patient to hear about all the degrees that we award. President Lowe. In accordance with the recommendation of the faculties of the schools and colleges, and in recognition of the successful completion of all degree requirements, I request that you confer upon these candidates the degree of 
wait for it, <laughs> Bachelor of Arts, Bachelor of Landscape Architecture, Bachelor of Music, Bachelor of Music Education, Bachelor of Science, Master of Applied Anthropology, Master of Architecture, Master of Arts, Master of Business Administration, Master of Chemical and Life Sciences, Master of Community Planning, Master of Education, Master of Engineering, Master of Engineering and Public Policy, Master of Finance, Master of Fine Arts, Master of Health Administration, Master of Historic Preservation, Master of Information Management, Master of Journalism, Master of Landscape Architecture, Master of Library and Information Science. Uh-oh. <laughs> <laughs> Master of Music, Master of Professional Studies, Master of Public Health, Master of Public Management, Master of Public Policy, Master of Quantitative Finance, Master of Real Estate Development, Master of Science, Master of Audiology, excuse me, Doctor of Audiology, Doctor of Education, Doctor of Musical Arts, and Doctor of Philosophy as appropriate in each case. Will all candidates for all degrees please rise. Congratulations, graduates. I am pleased to accept I'm pleased to accept the faculty's recommendations under the authority granted by the State of Maryland to the Board of Regents of the University System of Maryland and by the authority that the board has delegated to me. I am honored to confer upon you the candidates the degrees as appropriate in each of your cases. So please join me in one more round of applause for today's graduates. So now, now I call on Mr. Kirk Bell, President of the University of Maryland Alumni Association, to welcome our graduates into the ranks of the alumni. All right, all right, you guys can sit down. You don't have to stand up. It's okay. So. Uh, so earlier, Dr. Lowe called out my red jacket, so you can see it's all here, right? But it's also not about the jacket, but it's also about the bow tie. It's about the shoes. It's about everything, right? It's all about Maryland, and that's what we want to make sure you guys have that pride here today. It truly is an honor for me to officially welcome you to the class of 2018 into the Maryland alumni family. I feel such a sense of Maryland pride to be able to address you today at my alma mater, where I created a turf legacy. My daughter Megan, Vsauce grad, 2016. My son Connor, journalism graduate, last spring in 2018. And my son Ryan is a current education major here. He's a sophomore. Beginning today and for the rest of your life, you will be part of an amazing network of powerful, successful, civic-minded, and hardworking alumni. We together, are 375,000 strong. Think about all the things that we've done with that power. Terps have risen to the highest levels of their industries, launched hugely successful companies, served in government and for nonprofits, and made groundbreaking discoveries. You too will leave a path of greatness for others to follow. But the fun is just beginning. The Alumni Association is here to help you. Do this for me. Stay active through professional networking, social, 
and that is the kind of social you think about. We have those type of events, as well as service events. Stay informed through university publications like Terp Magazine and our alumni newsletter, The Shell. And stay connected with, the, with Maryland and with the friends you made here on campus. As you leave here, the first thing I ask you to do is find the Alumni Association on Facebook and like our page. You can also follow us on Twitter at Maryland underscore alumni. I know it's a little cheesy, you guys are laughing like it's like a public service announcement, right? All the folks in the front row, you can just hear it, but trust me, it's a lot of fun. Look at me, I'm up here doing this and you guys are out there listening to me, right? <laughs> so be sure to visit the uh, Alumni Association website at alumni.umd.edu to join as a member and find information on events, activities, and local alumni networks. We're just not here in College Park. We're all over the country, all over the world. So do this. Display your degree proudly. Demonstrate to the world high quality education your degree represents. In turn, Maryland will continue to make you proud to be a Terp. Now the last thing I want to say to you guys, and this isn't in my remarks right here, but do this for me when you leave here and as you graduate. Be proud to be a Terp, right? You see me dressed like this, I come here, Every day I probably have Maryland stuff on, whether I'm going to work, going to the gym, wherever. I want you to take that with you when you leave this university. Wear your hat, wear a t-shirt, wear sweats, wear something that has Maryland on it. That will start a conversation with other people. And then you can tell them how proud you are to be a Terp and to be part of this university. Don't let anybody ever back talk about this university because it's a great university and you should be very proud that you're a graduate from here. I hope to see you at homecoming. Be proud to be a Terp. Go Terps, let's go. Thank you, Kirk, for your service to our alumni. And uh, we come to the moment when we are going to recognize you, but before we recognize the graduates in an official way, there's somebody else we need to recognize. And that is, you're here today because you worked hard and you deserve getting this degree. But you're not, you did not get here by yourself. Somebody bent over you, helped you tie your shoelaces, helped you get up. Those people who made this day possible need to be recognized. They're your parents, your grandparents, other family members, and your friends who are here in this audience. So, what I would like to do is this, and I want to coordinate this. We haven't practiced this, but I know the Maryland Wind Ensemble can do this. <laughs> I'm going to first ask all the parents to stand, not yet. You need to stand because you know, sitting is a new smoking. <laughs> and uh, you need some exercise. So, I'm gonna ask you to stand, and then I'm gonna ask after they stand, I want all the graduates to stand and cheer them. And at that point, the Maryland Wind Ensemble will play something, right? <laughs> okay? So, will the parents, friends, and relatives of the graduates please stand? <laughs> will all the graduates stand and cheer them on? Thank you. You may sit down. Now, Rehan, would you please come up and lead our graduates in the long-standing tradition that recognizes the receipt of your degrees. On the count of three, please follow me in the tassel switch from right to left. Can I get a drum roll, please? One, two, three.
Thank you. I understand that in the audience, there are some families who are third, even fourth generation Terps. So I would like, let me ask this. Among all the people in the audience, uh, I'm not talking about the graduates, people up there in the stands, all those of you who attended the University of Maryland, would you please stand? Wow. I will say that's about at least one third, maybe more. Well, uh, so what we, do we do about the others? <laughs> By the authority vested in me as president, I hereby confer upon you today the title of Honorary Terp. So congratulations, Terp. In a few moments, Adia Evans, Dr. Brown, and the Maryland Wind Ensemble will lead us in the singing of the alma mater, and the words will be shown on the screen. Now, I cannot carry a tune, um, but uh, what I would like to do is recite the words of the alma mater because I cannot sing it. And when I raise my arm, I'm going to ask all of you in Xfinity to yell loudly. When I raise my arm and say, Maryland, yell loudly so that the walls of Xfinity Start trembling. Hail, Alma Mother. Hail to thee. Yeah. Steadfast in loyalty, we stand for yeah. love for the black and gold. Deep in our hearts we hold. Yeah. Singing thy praises forever throughout. Go Terps, go! Please stand for the singing of the alma mater. You may be seated. We now come to the conclusion of the 2018 December commencement exercises. I would like to remind you that the more intimate, the smaller college, school, and departmental ceremonies will take place tomorrow, and you should check your programs for times and places. Now, I've always, in fact, liked these smaller ceremonies, and uh, I urge you to attend your college or departmental event. Because, as I say, uh, they're more personal. I wish you could all come across the stage and we can shake hands, but that's not possible. Um, or we'll be here for a long time. 
But uh, let me share with you. Uh, years ago, when I uh, when I was uh, a dean, and uh, at one alumni event, this person came up to me and said, "Do you remember me?" I was dean of a law school. I graduated from the law school, you know, many years ago, and we had the ceremony where we, you know, we walked across the stage, you handed out the diploma, and you shake hands. And when I walked across that stage, you leaned over and whispered something in my ear that's been the source of my success throughout my life. I said, wonderful. And uh, what did I say? <laughs> move along, move along. <laughs> After the ceremony, I'm going to be at the small pavilion, this other gym where you assemble. And that's a chance for you to stop by if you like with your family members. Happy to shake your hand. There will be no move alongs. Uh, at that time, I will. Give you a little turtle pin if you don't ha already have one. If your family doesn't have one, that's fine because they're ordinary Terps today, and they get a pin. And if you like to take a take a selfie or take a regular photograph, I'd be happy to do that, and we'll make it personal and uh, and a more intimate event. Now, um, and and by the way, for for parents who don't know this, this little pin, you know, it costs about 75 cents. Uh, but it's really quite valuable because you can't buy it anywhere. You can only get it from the president, which means that, you know, because it's hard to get, supply and demand, it will increase in value. And you should know that if you go on eBay, uh, the last time I looked, it was going for $14. <laughs> so if you don't sell it and just keep it, then that, the, the value of that pin will keep uh, going up. Now, I thought I would conclude uh, today's ceremony by just reflecting on some of the comments I've received from students over the years. Because one of the traditions I've started is simply asking students, uh, and I've been doing this now for many years, to tweet me in exactly six words or less about their educational experience. And so I just thought I would share some of them with you today, just called more or less randomly from over the years, including comments I've received this year, um, because I think the parents would like to hear about it, because the request was, share with me your educational experience at the University of Maryland in six words. Uh, and I think these tweets, and I'm not claiming they're representative, but I think especially the faculty and staff who are dedicated to the education of our students will find these words very uh, meaningful. It reminds us of why we're in education. This is not just a job. This is a calling to prepare the next generation of citizens and leaders of our country. So just a handful. A fearless idea coming to Maryland. Exactly six words. Another person. Construction on campus, construction of mind. This person probably saw all the cranes going up and so on and so forth, but he focused on construction of mind. Probably an engineer, by the way. This campus changed me for good. I leave Maryland a better person. Maryland pride will stay with me always. By the way, that's seven words, but that's okay. <laughs> I grew up so much here. A place I never stop learning. The place 
where I found myself. My life and outlook changed forever. And one of my favorites, and I get something like this almost every year. Dear Wallace, don't make me leave. Well, I will say to the student, I will quote from Ecclesiastes, to everything there's a season and a time for every purpose under heaven. There's a time to be at the University of Maryland and there's a time to go. But always remember, this university, your alma mater, will always be here for you. As my favorite philosopher, Dr. Seuss, wrote for children of all ages. And uh, I want to quote his immortal words on why you need to leave. and start a new chapter in your life. All the places you'll go, you're off to great places. You're off and away. You have brains in your head. You have feet in your shoes. You can steer yourself in any direction you choose. Now, uh, these are my words. Uh, Sadly, it's true that uh, along the way, hang-ups can happen to you. There will be times when your right foot trips up your left foot, when your arms get sore, and when your sneakers leak. But just remember, you are a Turk. What does that mean? The terrapin That creature that inhabits, inhabits the waterways of the Mid-Atlantic has a very unique characteristic. That turtle can only walk forward. It cannot walk backwards. And how does that turtle walk forward? One step at a time, sticking its neck out. You are Terps. That is the fearless idea. To be a Terp is a state of mind. It's about grit. It's about moxie. It's about chutzpah. And that's why generations of Terps before you have gone on to lead lives of accomplishment, commitment, and service to others doing good in this world. So go to go back to quote Dr. Seuss, and will you succeed? Yes, you will indeed. 98 and three quarters percent guaranteed. Today is your day. Your mountain is waiting. So get on your way. God bless you and Godspeed. Ladies and gentlemen, Please stand and remain standing silently for the retiring of the colors by the University of Maryland Honor Guard.